Yeah, Jim Ovia is the founder and the chairman of Zenith Bank PLC, one of Nigeria's tier one listed lenders. And of course, he's one of the big bankers in the room when the central bank governor, Godin Emifile, met with the private sector last Saturday. So uh, we've been trying to get all of this, that conversation into your democracy uh, week with the inauguration and democracy day and all of that. So we need to let you have some of this thought so that you have an idea what the big boys within the business and economy think and what they are advising the Central Bank of Nigeria to do. So over the next few days, when you're listening to Godin de Mefile, perhaps you'll find if his presentation reflects a little bit of what he collated or put together, those thoughts he invested and ideas from this man. So let's take a listen to Jim Ovia and what he had to say about the economy policies, the banking industry, and the consumer credit. Part of the reasons why we're here is growth, growth trajectory. How do we grow our economy? How do we stop queuing up for the um, uh, petroleum products or the revenue from oil monoproduct economy? Uh, the CBN governor alluded to that already. We cannot survive that. It's a, ma it's a time bomb. No matter what economic theories that we propose, it cannot work. It definitely cannot work. The fundamentals are not right. They just are not. From Dangote refinery alone, thousands of people are employed. Not only that, we will stop allocation of foreign exchange for importation of imported finish uh, petroleum products because he will supply all of us in Nigeria. That alone, that singular activity means that we will conserve our foreign exchange. And not only that, when he exports, we're also going to earn some more foreign exchange. Other than from petroleum products, or crude oil, not, we don't have petroleum products, we're not uh, NMPCs. Um, do we know what NMPC refines? Uh, are you aware? <laughs> no, okay, we know that we have crude. We export that, that's where we get our foreign exchange. Peter, that is not sustainable. He is gonna start importing, I mean exporting, and will also increase our foreign exchange reserve. That is just one man, one idea and government support in terms of giving such approval and enabling um, uh, environment for that. Free zone has been approved for that objective. That's government enablement, which is what we always pray for and ask for. The government could have said, no, we're not going to give you any free zone, and they wouldn't. But I want to thank government officials who are here for allowing that be. Going to the next item, cement. We all know also that during the Obasanjo regime, the government decided that you can no longer import cement. If you produce cement here, then we can ban importation. And it worked. That's government policy again. Government enablement, and that has turned around the economy or the cement industry. And someone told me, but that's one man now. I said, no, that's not the point. You miss the point if you keep on personalizing this. It's not the point. The point remains that we will no longer be importing cement and disbursing so much of foreign exchange which we do not have enough of. That's the idea. It's not whether it's one man. Besides, Dangote Cement was not the largest cement company in Nigeria a few years ago. It was Lafarge. Lafarge was the one, not Dangote Cement. Dangote was far distant. In fact, Dangote wasn't even producing. He was a trader, cement trader. He wasn't producing. It was when he came into that space he became the largest. So this can be done. 
Now, we can now see what cement manufacturer, cement industry has now done to our economy in terms of import restriction. We are no longer allocating foreign exchange for cement. Those are the directions we should be looking at. The next item, government policy again. The two I've just mentioned, government policy, government enablement. The third one, ICT, telecommunications. In 2001, the government licensed GSM. That radicalized everything we talk about today. If we're talking about social media, we're talking about online banking, we're talking about interswitch, we're talking about ATM, to be able to have banks interconnect. If there were no telecommunications licenses in terms of GSM, we'll be nowhere today. I can give you parallel exam example of some countries who were very late in licensing uh, their citizens for GSM, where they are. I will pick a very good country economically that GCUN had already alluded to, Ethiopia. Ethiopia population about 110, 120, thereabout. The internet recession there in Ethiopia is one of the poorest you can think of anywhere, very epileptic. You'd be wondering a country whose economy is so well run, how come they don't have good broadband, good internet service? Nigeria is by far superior in that regard. For a simple reason, the government refused to license GSM licenses, to give it out to the best performers, either international audience or so. But Nigeria were very liberal. We didn't care who MTN was, neither did we care who um, Strive Masiua is. For some of you who don't know about Strive Masiua, that's the founder of Econet. We didn't care from Zimbabwe, the MTN from, we didn't care, just take the license, give us food, that's all we wanted. We don't care who you are, black, white, yellow, we didn't care. That kind of mindset of government at that time was a great thing. It was very revolutionary, very radical. And today, the MTN Nigeria is the largest mobile network in the whole of Africa, even more than the one they set up in their home country. So can we repeat, replicate this kind of success stories? Yes, I've just given two. The telecom is the third one. Could you imagine where we'll be today if NITE was still the one giving all of us mobile phone. With all due respect to the gentleman who bought Nitel. Is he here? No. He's not. Okay. Well, someone buys it. That's fine. There's no problem. He buys it. He likes it. He likes antiques. He likes the infrastructure. But nobody uses any Nitel either landline or mobile phone today. So don't worry about who is going to head Nitel. Let it just die natural debt. Part of the example all of us know, because we've been lucky to have the opportunity to participate in ICT in this country since as back as 1990. We were asking for just approval from NITEL to allow us to set up a satellite dish. A satellite dish, what was this, seven point, about 7.5 meter dish. It's quite huge. It will fill this room. The military government at that time, they saw it, they thought we were, were spying with South Africa against the government. I knew nothing about spying. All I knew was about the internet. But the government didn't know much. But that's a long story for another day. Now, where are we today? Nigeria is probably one of the best countries you can have mobile internet services, and that's true. Even though we are not there yet what we want in terms of broadband, maybe only about 15, 20% penetration, forget about the fact that teledensity is about 90%. But if you're talking about broadband, it's less than 20%. But that's, that's 3G, not even 4G. Now, Americans, the rest of the world are fighting over 5G. 
So you could really see it is the private sector. All these examples I've given is just private sector. But on the backdrop of government enablement and government empowerment, that, that's very important. Now, finally, before I round up, because the stories that have been told by Dangote is enough for all of us to start discuss. It had to be very, very practical. To be honest, I do not know whether low inflation rate, high inflation rate, whether low interest rate, high inter um, interest rate is what we need or we don't need. But you need to have fundamentals right. If you have what is right, you are not the common man is not going to know or remember whether interest rate is low or high. But it's also great we have brilliant economists here who are also going to discuss all this and teach all of us what we need to do. But I do know things that make sense. And what Dan Goody had done, the cement, the refinery, what we've done in telecom in this country makes a great deal of sense. Ladies and gentlemen, before Dan Goody rounded up, he mentioned the issue of consumer lending. Consumer lending. Now, many people didn't have their mind to that much. But GCUN is a manufacturer, he's an entrepreneur, but he's not a banker. Why is he talking about consumer lending again? He means well. Now, the reason why consumer lending hadn't blossomed in this country are twofold. One, KYC. KYC is the primary number one reason. KYC. You don't know who you are lending to. Ongo Kaokafo will change his name tomorrow to Benedicta Namdi. <laughs> the same person. But how do you identify who is who? We are talking about people in Republic of Benin, Niger, Chad. They cross over the border. In fact, don't quote me that I said so. It was mentioned at the, at the, at the, at, in Abuja by the government officials as well as the governors, state governors. They say, look, people cross from the border. They just walk in. We can't identify who is who. The same culture. We all have the same culture. Either they are you know, re the same religious group. So you don't know who is who. They easily get our passports. So we need to have not just a biometric system that helps, but national ID.